so I, really I'm battling to hear what the name of the person is that asked the question. I just got the furry part, but you're wondering who is the father of these cubs. And the cubs, the father of the cubs, well, we don't know. We know that the Birmingham's mated with these females, but we have no idea which Birmingham it is exactly. It can't sort of identify which one they all mated with these females. So it could be Nena, it could be Nsuku, it could be Mfumo, it could be um, Tinyo. We don't know. We know that Mfumo and Tinyo spent a lot of time with it and so we think maybe one of them but there's no possible way to know they also could be mixed paternity where the situation where both male uh, I mean all males mated with them and so you find that there's DNA from multiple different males at the same time now our lions seem to be moving closer and closer towards Vuyatela camp so I wonder if they're not gonna come pop out somewhere at the dam today wouldn't that be nice if we had them all on the dam cam and you could watch them the entire day that would be very very cool now, like I said, it is a bit of a minefield in here. There's lots of stumps, so we're trying very carefully. All right, so I believe Iberia, Zumi, you are ready for waiting for the cubs to arrive. It's still a little bit far away, but they are slowly, slowly, slowly heading in that direction. And I'm just trying to see if I can't get around here. Careful, Gray. Hello. Are you coming to say hello to us? What are you doing? It's amazing to watch their sort of little personalities. Each one kind of seems to do its own thing. There's one or two that are a little bit shy. Well, there we go. <laughs> so Skip, who's 12 years old, well, Skip, it's lovely that you're asking so many questions this morning. It's really good when we get younger viewers watching. And so I'm glad that you're watching and that you're enjoying the lions. And you wonder whether the sticks and the Inkahumas ever come into contact with one another. Well, yes, I would suppose so. Because Inkahumas um, spend their time on Juma. And the sticks every now and then will venture into this area. So it does sometimes happen that they will kind of come across each other's paths. But the Inkahumas being five lionesses and the sticks being three means that the sticks will have a tough time if the Ngumas run into them. They're going to really struggle to be able to actually defend themselves. So you'll find that the sticks don't spend that much time here anymore because I think they've bumped into the Ngumas too many times. Now, cubs are all over the place. We've got to watch where we're driving, Skip. We don't want to drive into a cub. So I'm trying to just kind of dodge cubs everywhere at this stage. And I'm hoping that they're going to stay with the mothers. And there's another big termite mound coming up. And I'm hoping that all the moms go resting on that mound so we can actually see who's here and work out what's actually going on with this pride and how many lionesses are actually with us and whether or not the pregnant female that everybody has been reporting is actually here. So that's as many as I can see. There's one in front and then the three coming backwards from there. Now, it's going to be interesting, like I say, if we can't see who is missing. But definitely none of these three lionesses at the back are pregnant. These are all, I think, moms. And then it looks like the youngest lioness in front from what I can see. It's difficult to say, though. Let's just try and see if we can't get round here quickly. And here comes another little curious face around the bush. I don't know where we're going to go from here, Craig. It's quite thick, but maybe through this gap. So I'm just going to go around this corner and hopefully we'll then be able to see everybody nicely out in the open. And there is the most beautiful picture on our left-hand side. Look at that. That is as good as it gets. Hello, little one. Up in your tree. Isn't that amazing? That is, as, like I say, as good as it possibly gets. Lions up in a fallen over marula. Now I'm a little bit sad this morning because I know we're not allowed to take photos, but this is something that I would love to photograph. And unfortunately I left my memory cards at home. So no photos for me this morning of the Nkuma Pride, which is a little bit saddening, but I suppose we're gonna just have to enjoy it and live it and experience it. and maybe we'll get lucky and the Nkuma Pride are going to spend a lot more time here over the next few days and hopefully we'll be able to then see a lot more of them. They're definitely, definitely on their way 
down towards sort of quarantine and Vuatella camp. I can see we're now starting to slope downwards again. So, Riti, you're wondering what the biggest pride is in Juma. Well, in Juma itself, um, the Inkuma pride is the pride of 11, but within the sort of northern section, um, the Torchwood pride is the biggest. They hang around on Torchwood and Biffle's Hook, and as far as I know, there's nine females and ten cubs, so that makes a pride of 19, which is the biggest pride in this particular section. So they are a possibility for us to see. They do sometimes go down towards Cheetah Plains and onto Inkoro and those areas every now and then. It's seldom, but they do. But our biggest pride is the Inkuma pride. And who knows, maybe the Inkuma pride is about to go from 11 to a little bit more. If there's a female that is definitely pregnant, then you never know. Hopefully, there might be some new little cubs lying around. And I must be honest, out of the lionesses that I have seen, I have not seen an amber eyes. So that's the one that is missing at this stage. That's the only one that I haven't seen. I've seen all the others. And like I said, the one in front, I, I haven't seen well enough to know if she's pregnant, but she's been kind of hanging around in the front. Now, this little cub is still taking it very easy on its marula. And it looks just like a leopard, isn't that? Look at that. And this seems to be the naughty one. This is the one that keeps kind of coming towards us and checking us out. And it's almost watching over its shoulder the females disappearing as if to say, do we really have to walk? I'm so comfy on my marula tree. Sorry, buddy, you're going to have to come down because your moms are leaving you behind. Adele, you're wondering if I get nervous when we're so close to prides like this with the cubs. Well, no, Adele, not at all. I really, really don't get nervous. These lions luckily have seen vehicles since they were weeks old, and so they're quite used to us. The females showed us their cubs when the cubs were still young, and so really they don't mind us being around. You can see the females are not showing any potential aggression to us, and so no. If you come across females that do start showing aggression, then yes, but you'd always just then leave those sort of females alone and let the cubs sort of get away and, and not try and sort of um, make them more nervous and, and not harass them. So in this situation, no, the Inkuma Pride is very used to us and it means that we can get these amazing views of them and then just enjoy their company and be sort of absolutely spellbound by the fact that you're spending time with the biggest of the cats in Africa. So we really are fortunate. Oh, stick game is now in full force. And you can see with siblings, it's always a case of, no, I want the stick. I want the stick. Even though there's 20 sticks lying around, everybody always wants the stick. Here we go. She's decided, nope. So, Daphne, you're wondering if we ever have a lion jump onto a vehicle. Well, Daphne, I've had one of the Mangen pride when they were still younger try put its paws on the side of the car but I've never had one jump oh, look at the two of them running <laughs> I've never had one actually jump full on onto the vehicle we'll try and stop that as best we can we're not going to try and promote that kind of behavior at the end of the day that's going to cause a lot of problems for us we can't have lines jumping on vehicles and so if they get that close and they start to do things like that then generally what we'll try and do is just try and sort of stop the car make a bit of a noise and that's normally enough just to keep the lines at a safe distance and not to teach them that behavior that it's acceptable to jump on a car. We don't want them on the cars. We want to be able to view them without sort of interfering in their lives and we also don't want them to then get too comfortable around us that they think it's okay to jump on cars because the progression from there is then to investigate whatever is in the car. So Martin, you're wondering how we know the lioness won't attack us. Well, the fact that the lioness is walking very, very calmly, ears are perked up, tail is not moving, she's not looking at us in any way, even though we're with her cubs, it means that she's completely relaxed. In a situation where a lion is angry, you'll find lions will start waving their tails, their ears will flatten, they'll growl and hiss and make a lot of noise at you and kind of tell you that they're unhappy with your presence. So in this situation, they're just not showing any of those sort of aggressive um, behaviors, and that means that we can be perfectly sort of happy with their response to what we're doing. I'm just trying to negotiate a big log here. Ooh.
Right, so we're going to spend more time with these in Kahumas because, well, why wouldn't you? It's the most fantastic morning possible.